someone gave me a very good piece of advice um, along the way. I was moaning one night about how hard it was and how challenging it was and how these people just didn't understand and, you know, they didn't get it. And, you know, he said, look, um, in business, 50% of the people are going to respect you and help you because you're a woman and they're going to want you to be successful and 50% won't. So my advice is to spend no energy, no time, uh, no initiative on those 50% who don't want to see you succeed and really leverage the people who um, will help you. And I, I thought that was probably along my, in my career some of the best advice. Some of the most and biggest derivatives desks in Europe are in France. So they're very quantitative, very strategic thinkers, but they're also a country of introverts. I had a, a co-chief operating officer in New York um, that I worked with, uh, who I adored, uh, who was very smart, but also was quite introverted. And so happily I learned that the best way to approach that is to present your information in some way that gives that person a time to think about it. And I found that to be also very effective with the French culture. All the things that you think you've learned and you've got it down and it's working well, and then you're in a new culture and you have to respect that culture, you have to work in that culture, and you have to adapt to that culture. You may want it to be different, but you're in their culture and you have to, you have to play by their rules. Probably the most important lesson I learned is that the French respect things in writing as opposed to verbal. So we would go to a meeting, for example, with John Thane, and who was our CEO, and he'd say, okay, we're going left. And everybody in the room would nod, and, and this was after debate and consideration. He was very good at that. Um, but, you know, I, most of my colleagues in the U.S., no one was confused about it. We were going left. And the next morning we'd come in and the French people would say, well, maybe we should come back and talk about that again. And maybe going left isn't really the best idea. Maybe we should think about, you know, going right. And I was so confused because I thought he couldn't have been more clear. But I realized that after a meeting, you send an email and you confirm everything in writing. And you say, we're doing this, 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 and this. And that was that. And once it was in writing, it seemed to be then more accepted and more definitive. When you're building your career and when you're in the workplace, you should always have a portfolio of things you're doing. It builds skills in different ways. You meet a whole network of people that are different than the ones you have in your workplace. And I think it's really enriching. And I tell you some of the most important opportunities that I've had both when I was working and after, many of them came from the, the activities that I engaged in that were outside of my work. But I met people who remembered me, worked with me, or I would run across them in a business context. And so it, it helped me in so many ways. And I think that's even true in this stage of my life. I have a portfolio. I have, um, I tried to keep a hand in the business community through board work, corporate board work. I am now the chair of Catholic Charities in New York, so I'm trying to do some philanthropic work that really is important to me. Again, have a portfolio. Have a, a, a stream of things that you love or you're interested in because work is um, challenging and you need those releases, those outlets. You need to move away from it from time to time. You need a break sometimes. Um, and you'll just benefit so much in so many ways that I couldn't even begin to describe.